So we deal with this just like we would a variable expression. We multiply the coefficients there in front, and I'm going to write out way more than you really need to write out, but I want it to be clear here. You multiply the coefficients in front. You multiply what's under each individual square root. And then all we have to do is simplify, okay? <clears throat> so 2 times 5 is 10, and 6 times 12 is 72. But you got to ask yourself, can I break down that square root? And we can. Um, yes, but is there one bigger? 12 is not a perfect square. 36 times 2. 8 and 9 will work, but 8 can be simplified even more. So if we do 36, then we've got 10 times 6 square root of 2, which gives us our final answer of 60 square root of 2. That is the fully simplified answer that I'm looking for here. Okay, and one more reminder. So you can check these, okay, plug in the original expression, just make sure that you close the parentheses after the 6, and then close the parentheses after the 12, okay, that's the decimal value of this, the exact value, and then plug in yours, make sure that those numbers match, okay. Again, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you have the most simple, okay, 10 square root to 72 would give us the same thing. Um, so it doesn't guarantee that you have the most simple, it just guarantees that you haven't made a mistake. Alright, we can do the same thing with cube roots, okay? We can do the same thing with cube roots. The only thing is we can't mix and match cube roots and square roots, okay? We can't mix and match cube roots and square roots, but as long as we've got a cube root times another cube root, we are good to go. So, multiply the coefficients in front, negative 5 times negative 4, multiply what's under the cube root, 4 and 6. So we've got positive 20 cube roots of 24 and 8 and 3 here for this one. 8 is the biggest perfect cube that goes into 24 and the cube root of 8 is 2. So final answer here is 40 cube roots of 3. 40 cube roots of 3. Okay? And as a reminder, your cube root button is under your math menu if you wanted to check that one. Press math and it's number 4 is where your cube root is. Alright, now that's just a single radical times a single radical. We can also multiply binomial expressions of these. Now this is going to uh, benefit us a little bit more down the road. Um, because we actually end up using this with division, which doesn't really make sense, but we do, okay? But this is a binomial times a binomial. When we have a binomial times a binomial, we have to FOIL, okay? We have to FOIL, and we can FOIL with these. Now, is there something that I could do to make my life a little bit easier? Well, if we could combine them, we would, but can we combine these? Mm -mm, no. Yep, square root of 4 is 2. That's going to make life easier, okay? Now, that doesn't typically come up very often, uh, but this was, it, it was in this ex uh, uh, example. Sorry, so we tongue tied there. <laughs> Didn't know what I was trying to say. The square root of 4 is 2. If I don't have to multiply with a square root, I'm not going to multiply with a square root because that's just harder than it has to be. All right, so... First, two terms times each other, so that's just 2 times 2 times the square root of 3. The outside, we've got a coefficient of 2, and we have 3 times 2 under the square root. The inside, we've got a coefficient of 2 and a square root of 6, and the square root of 6 is negative, so the negative is going to go in front of that. And then our last, we have a positive times a negative, so that's a negative. And 6 and 2 were both under the square root. So we've got the square root of 6 times 2. Now we need to simplify. Is there anything that 
that we can um, simplify right off the bat. Okay, yes, the 2 times 2 is 4, so we've got 4 square roots of 3. Then when we look at the next two terms, what's going on there? They're both the square root of 6. One is positive 2, one is negative 2, so those cancel each other out. And then we've got minus the square root of 12. Is our answer fully simplified? No, no because 12 breaks down. So we've got 4 square root of 3 minus the square root of 4 times 3. So that's 2 square root of 3. And 4 minus 2 is 2 square roots of 3. So a lot of times, these expressions here, even though it's a binomial times a binomial, and we're used to when there are variables involved, that gives us a trinomial expression, usually. Uh, this actually boils down to a single expression. Now, it won't always. Sometimes there's another constant in there or something like that. But a lot of times, it does simplify quite a bit. Okay? Um, and you could type that in with the parentheses at the beginning. And then type in 2 squared to 3, and it should be decent enough. Okay, let's do one more here. We've got uh, 7 plus 5 square root of 2 times 7 minus 5 square root of 2. Now, these expressions have a special name. Does anybody know what we call these? Rational expressions. No, they are rational expressions. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Well, yeah, I mean, it is. It would be the difference. It would give us the difference for the squares. But it's not that we're looking for. Uh, okay, we're getting there. Okay, there's a special fancy math word for that. No, not inverses. It starts with C. Condition. Um, did you get this? Have you ever heard that word? Yes, maybe. If you had me, you probably have. <clears throat> These are called conjugates. That is a word you should be familiar with. Um, these are called conjugates. They're the exact same expression, but they differ by the sign in between them. Okay? The exact same expression, but they differ by the sign in between them. So, we still handle it the same way. We still FOIL, but there's something special that's going to happen uh, later on. Okay? First times first, 7 times 7. The outside is uh, a negative 7 times 5 times the square root of 2. I'm just writing everything out. The inside gives us a positive 7 times 5 square root of 2. The last, a positive times a negative is a negative. 5 times 5 and the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 gives us the square root of 2 times 2. Alrighty, let's see what happens here. 7 times 7 is 49. We've got that same deal here where the outside and the inside are the same, but they differ by a sign. So the minus 7 times 5 square root of 2 plus 7 times 5 square root of 2, those are going to go away. 5 times 5 is 25. Square root of 4. Hmm, what's the square root of 4? 2. two. So 49 minus 50, this gives us negative 1. So we just multiplied two binomials with square roots in them, and we ended up with just a whole number. Okay? That's what happens when you multiply conjugates. Now, they don't always give you negative 1. Okay? They do not always give you negative 1. But they will give you just a plain constant number. No radical, nothing like that. They will give you a plain whole number. <clears throat> now, that number comes from 7 times 7 is 49, uh, 5 times 5 is 25, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. Um, so, if you see these, really you can jump down to this final step. I, just looking at that, I could have told you that the answer was negative 1 because I realized that the outside and the inside are going to cancel. So, it's just the first minus. Okay. Um, all right, so 